This Bible study is going to be on the children in the kingdom. Now, in Matthew 22:30, we read the following. Now, I always use the King James because I trust the old Bible. I don't trust the new Bibles. The new Bibles leave words out that totally change the meaning. So, I mean, let's face it. One word can change a positive to a negative. For example, I borrow money from you and I say, oh, I'm going to pay you next week. As opposed to, I am not going to pay you next week. One word totally changes the meaning in the Bible or of our conversation. So here, turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew and we're going to read the following. Matthew 22 and ver, uh, chapter 22 and verse 30. Jesus speaking. For in the resurrection, they're talking about in the resurrection. Matter of fact, let me do something here. I'm going to go back just a little bit further. Uh, let's go to Matthew 22, 23. Matthew chapter 22, verse 23. Now the Sadducees were a denomination of the Jews, a sect, and they believed only the Torah. And the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses. Matthew, um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They didn't accept the Psalms. They didn't accept the prophets. They didn't accept, uh, you know, the book of Daniel, the book of Jeremiah, the book of Isaiah, Ezekiel. They didn't accept those as canon. They only accepted the books of Moses. So they didn't believe in the resurrection. So here it is, they're coming to Jesus, and they're trying to trick him. Okay, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. Now, I've heard it said they were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection. Uh, why in the world, if you believe that when you die, that's it, you know, you know, you die, there's no resurrection, there's no second chance, there's no second hope, you got nothing to look forward to, wouldn't you be sad, you see? But not only that, what, uh, I, I can't see the purpose of, if there's no hope when you die, I, I can't see the purpose of even believing in a God or following God. I, I just can't see it. But the Sadducees, what can I say? The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. Now they came to Jesus, saying, Master, Moses said, If a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed, seed, and raise up seed unto his brother. Obviously, they're talking about children here. Now there was with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third, unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall be, be, she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And that word err, that's where we get the word error, as in wrong. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. 
See, that's where it ends in a lot of the new Bibles. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God. And then the new Bible people the, will jump up and down, say, see, see, that's proof. Angels are sexless. They cannot have sex. See, so, so, so the, uh, Genesis 6 is not about the angels, the fallen angels having sex with women and having giants. See, that's proof right there. They're like the angels of God. They're sexless. They can't have sex. But they leave out two last words. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. In heaven, but are as the angels of God in heaven. You see, not all the angels of God are in heaven. Verse 31. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. But when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. So, you know, that's the thing. They always came to Jesus trying to trick him with their words. And he always put them to shame. I mean, seriously. Who could come up with this stuff but by the power and the word of God? So, and if you want to read a second witness, you can read in Mark 12, 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, and obviously that's the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. So, And then in Revelation 12, 7, we read, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. So the dragon has angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, that's you and me, to some extent, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So obviously, um, not all the angels seem to be in heaven. And yes, I know that in Job 1, it says that the angels um, presented themselves, the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord and Satan also was among them, but was Satan up in heaven, or was the Lord here on earth? I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what's what, you know, because personally I believe Satan was here on earth and the, and the Lord was down here. I don't know. You know, I'm, I don't want to make a big point out of it. Uh, go to Matthew 18, chapter 18, verse 1. This bears to be read. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You know, they're, uh, I guess they're arguing among themselves, you know, who among the twelve are going to be the greatest ones, right? You know, so, who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we have to be converted and be like little children. Don't little children come to love and respect and trust their parents, their mother, their father? Well, that's what Jesus wants us to do. 
He wants us to be converted and be like little children and trust and depend and love him. That's a, a lot of people don't do that. I'm guilty of that myself. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. Think about that for Sunday school teachers. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Uh, people don't know it, but a millstone, a small millstone is 70 pounds. So if you'd like to have a 70 pound rock tied around your, hanged around your neck and thrown into the sea, try swimming with that for a little while. So if you offend one of the little ones that believe in Jesus and hurt them, it's going to be, it would be better than if you were drowned in the sea. Because they, you only die once. When you offend one of the little ones in Christ, you're going to die twice. Verse 7. Woe unto the world because of because of offenses for it must needs be that offenses come but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh wherefore if thy hand or thy foot offend thee cut it off cut them off and cast them from thee it is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire and if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Did you catch that? Little children have angels in heaven. Yeah, you know, you always heard it said that uh, children have guardian angels. Believing ones do. I believe that. Jesus, right here, you know. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. So, how think ye, if a man have a, an hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, Doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Boy, that was me. I was, I was that one that went astray for quite a number of years. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish so all right so um that's about the angels of god in heaven all right so let's take so we've pretty much established the lord loves children and that when we are resurrected when we rise from the dead, whether, you know, uh, there's another verse I'm going to have to, because uh, another verse I'm going to have to show you. Not everyone is going to be dead when the Lord comes back. I mean, the great majority of, of Christians are going to rise from the dead. But there are going to be a few people that do not die when the Lord returns and they shall be alive and they shall be resurrected so let's check that out 
All right, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Paul, but I would not have you to be ignorant. Ignorant doesn't mean stupid. It just means you don't know something. Um, when it comes things about the Bible, I like to consider myself not being ignorant. Um, when it comes to rocket science, engineering, and brain surgery, yeah, I'm ignorant. I, I, definitely. So, you know, it just means you don't know something. And then when somebody tells you, you're not ignorant anymore. You know, it's like uh, somebody gives you the keys to the sports car and it's got a stick shift and you've never driven a stick shift. You're ignorant. And then they say, oh, okay, this is what you got to do. You got to push in this clutch and do this and then un let the clutch go. And then, you know, then after a while you get good at it. Now you're not ignorant anymore, okay? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And we're not talking about people taking a nap. That's a euphemism for being dead. Okay? But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Haven't you ever been to a funeral where people were sorrowful and they were crying? Even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and I do, even so them which, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. See, in the second coming, Jesus is going to be bringing his sheep. The great shepherd's going to be bringing his sheep. Oh, but he's not coming as a lamb. He's going to be coming as a, a lion. Big difference between a lion and a lamb. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Listen to that again. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. The great majority of people are going to be the, you know, the dead in Christ. From the time of Adam to you know, the last approximately 6,000 years. But there are going to be some people who are alive when the Lord returns. Probably not many, because in Matthew 24, um, well, we'll, re we'll get to that. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. It's not going to be a secret rapture, people. It's going to be a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. See, when we go up to meet him in the clouds, he's coming back down. So, this is going to be a house cleaning. Oh yeah, it's going to be a spring cleaning. Everything gets thrown out and cleaned. All right, so let's see, Matthew 24. All right, Matthew 24, 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, and that's you people, don't ever let anybody try to convince you uh, it's unbelieving Jews. No. No. You're the elect. You are the elect. 
And the Jews that come to Christ, they're the elect too. But the, but the Jews that deny Jesus, I don't know how you can call those the elect. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So there's going to be a remnant of people who are alive when the Lord returns. And then, in the resurrection, there's not going to be any marriage. But yet, believe it or not, there's going to be children in the millennial, uh, in the kingdom. Now, why do I say, so where do these, let's take a look at that real quick. All right, uh, turn your Bibles to Isaiah 11. This is a really interesting uh, chapter in the Bible. Isaiah is, it's a wild book. I mean, I've met very, very, very few Christians that have even bothered to read the book of Isaiah. All right, chapter, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David the king. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with iniquity for the meek of the earth. Doesn't the Bible say the meek shall inherit the earth? And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Now who do you think they're talking about here? Obviously they're talking about Christ. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now listen carefully. The wolf also, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and that's a goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Have you ever seen a lion eating straw like an ox? Uh, no. So obviously this is future. Lion's going to be vegetarian. Verse 8, and the suckling child, now what is a suckling child? And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. An asp is an extremely dangerous viper, a pit viper. It's a snake. One bite and you're in trouble. You might even die. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice nest. I'm sorry, on the cockatrice, cockatrice den. That's another poisonous snake. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, for it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. So obviously, well, let's, let's, we could read on. Let's see. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again 
the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Um, northern Israel was taken into captivity into Assyria. So, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the Isles of the Sea. Hmm, from the Isles of the Sea. What are some of the Isles of the Sea? How about Great Britain, the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Ireland? You know where the King James Bible came from? I don't know. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You see... It's going to be the Lord that gathers his people, not the United Nations, in 1948 in the Israeli Zionist state. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. And Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So... Obviously, this is future people. So let's go back to verse 8. And the suckling child, now a suckling child is a child that sucks milk at the breast. It's a baby. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child, that's a child that eats solid food, shall put his hand on the cockatrice nest den. All right, so if there are children when the lion is eating straw, which hasn't happened yet, obviously this is future. So where do these children come from? There's not going to be marriage in the resurrection. Uh, right? Didn't we read that? That in the resurrection, they'll neither marry nor be given in marriage but shall be as the angels in heaven. So where do these children come from? Now, my opinion is, and I'm not saying I'm right, personally, I believe these are all the children that died what is commonly called the age of accountability. You know, people that had babies that died in childbirth, um, children that were aborted, you know, just, and um, a couple of these, at least two of these are going to be mine. So I'm going to have, probably have two children to raise in the millennium. I believe this is going to be the millennium. I, I can't prove it from the Bible. If somebody can show me proof, um, I would appreciate it. You know, that's my thing. Uh, it's just my opinion. So, you know, obviously, in the kingdom, we're not going to get married. So, where do these kill children come from? I believe they were children that died young, child and died birth, children that were aborted. I believe that they'll be given bodies, be given a chance to grow up, and be given a chance to decide, to be tested, and decide whether they will serve the Lord or they will serve Satan. Now, that's my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. Um, I'm kind of reading in between the lines here. But, you know, it's just something to think about. And, you know, and if you disagree with me, that's okay. You know, I believe me, I've been wrong uh, quite a few times. You know, that's that's why it's a, a good thing for uh, a man not to remember all of his mistakes. That's what a wife is for, right? Never mind. Sorry. Um, here's an interesting thing. In Psalms 94, 90 and verse 4, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. In 2 Peter 3.8, and a lot of people don't uh, accept 2 Peter's scripture, 
but they're idiots. Of course, they, they usually don't like Paul either. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now, I, I just, this is just something I'm throwing out there, and it's not a doctrine, you know. But um, one thing I like about Ken Hoven is uh, he says the earth is about 6,000 years old. He's, he believes the creation was about 6,000 years ago. And who am I to argue, you know? And... The thing is, didn't the Lord say that in six days uh, we should work on the seventh day would be the Sabbath? Well, if the earth is 6,000 years old, approximately, the Lord comes back, and then there's a thousand years millennium of rest. Isn't, wouldn't that be the seventh day of rest? But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. You know, so, to me, I believe the millennium is going to be the Lord's Sabbath. You know, the earth is 6,000 years old, seventh day is the Lord's Sabbath. Boom! We're going to get a thousand years of rest. All right, turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 1 and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand boy I'm looking forward to this day and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent think about that next time you read Genesis 3:15 about the serpent that uh, was talking to Eve that said, uh, ye shall not surely die. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. You see, Satan's going to be bound for the thousand year millennium. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. See, Satan's going to be locked up for the thousand year millennium. And personally, I believe that all the children that died abortions and childbirth and young they're going to be given new bodies. They're going to be given a chance to grow up. And probably our jobs will probably be to raise them and teach them the Lord's ways. And after that, he, the devil, must be loosed a little season. So, let's see. Let's keep reading. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Do you realize you're going to be priests of God and of Christ? Verse 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So, didn't we read in verse 3, And after that he, shall, he must be loosed a little season? 
Verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and encompassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and that's the new Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So, this seems to me that the little children are going to be given bodies. They're going to be given a thousand years without Satan to be trained, Satan's going to be loosed, and everybody's going to be given a choice, and um, uh, I guess Satan will deceive a lot of people, and they're going to fight against the Lord. So there's going to be another war. But fire will come down from heaven, devour them, and boom, that's it. So, all right, well, Wow, 36 minutes. I uh, I thought this was going to be about a 10-minute Bible study, but, you know, what can I tell you? I'm always ranting and raving and, you know. But uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting really tired. It seems like the only things I teach upon is like Bible versions, dispensational theology, the pre-trib rapture, Zionism, Judaism. So... You know, I thought I would do something a little different. And uh, I had somebody that asked me uh, a question about this. And, you know, when you've already done the research, you may as well make a Bible study out of it, you know. so. But um, there's a teaching going around that people are going to have natural, their regular human bodies, and that they're, they're going to enter into the kingdom. But from what I understand, Calvary Chapel uh, teaches that. I don't know where they get that belief. Um, you know, there's going to be people alive that go into the kingdom because they were alive when Jesus comes back. But that doesn't... I don't necessarily understand where the Bible says that they're going to have their regular bodies. I don't understand that. You know, I could be wrong, and if somebody can show me uh, from the Bible, I'd appreciate it because, you know, I don't know everything. I just know the one that does know everything, and that's God the Father. You know, even Jesus doesn't know everything. Ooh, that's shocking, huh? Yeah, Jesus doesn't know everything. He knows almost everything. What does Jesus not know? One thing that I know of. Well, if you turn your Bibles to Mark, Mark, 13 verse 3 and as he Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of all these things shall be fulfilled and Jesus answering them began to say take heed lest any man deceive you you know, and then he says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and to deceive many. And then he goes, you know, all these things. So, um, but then, all right, so skip down to Mark 13, 31. Jesus speaking, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Listen carefully. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. See, even Jesus doesn't know the day and the hour that he's going to return. 
Only the Father knows. Verse 33, Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So, even Jesus doesn't know everything. There's a, only God the Father knows the day and the hour of Christ coming. So, all right, well, 40 minutes. I uh, hope you learned something. And all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.